This is the group project for Fire 105 at Miramar College. Our case study was on the 327 East Boyd Street fire that occurred in Los Angeles on May 16, 2020, that resulted in the serious injury of 12 firefighters. Our group members are Anthony Stuckey, Daniel Noble, Chris Stoddard, and James Bell. The building itself is Smoke Tokes, an international distributor and wholesaler of smoking and vaping products. Products that range from normal, like bongs and lighters, to more hazardous materials, such as butane and hash oil. The building is a compact, single-story structure with a total surface area of 2,750 square feet and is a standard concrete masonry structure. There was no available floor plan or inner layout of the building, but from its simple design and this photo of the interior after the fire, it appeared to be one long continuous room with various sections for storage of materials. It also had this little basement section here that was most likely either for storage or for maintenance. The building had two rolling overhead metal doors as its primary entrance. There was also potentially another door in the rear of the building, but no images of that portion of the structure were available. But it's not unlikely that it had a fire escape or something. Uh, it is also important to quickly note that the building had no fire suppression or alert systems. So the fire was reported in 1826 by bystanders. The LA City Station 9 crew arrived not long after, seeing moderate smoke coming from the closed building. The fire crew then began with standard offensive operations, sending a floor team to forcibly enter the structure, while another team went onto the roof to cut ventilations. Unfortunately, soon after, both teams noticed that conditions were rapidly deteriorating inside the building. The roof team was being engulfed by dark smoke and seeing flames coming through their ventilations, as well as hearing jet engine sounds coming from beneath them. At the same time, the fire chief felt something was off about the fire and hurriedly ordered his men to retreat. Unfortunately, again, a large fireball exploded from the structure's entrance, engulfing and burning the retreating firefighters, as seen in this video. As you can see, large plumes of black smoke were erupting from the building, firefighters were retreating, and that is when the flames started. So the flames were hot enough to actually start burning and melting the protective equipment of the firefighters. Um, the flame also, from its intensity, as you can see, started spreading to the two neighboring complexes and were burning the building in front of it and behind it as well, as well as scorching this truck. As this, When this event happened, a mayday call was given and the scene was changed to a major emergency structure fire. All right, so I'm going to now explain why the fire reacted the way it did. First is that there are still no exact causes of what started the fire, although given that the store sold lighters and other smoking products, there are some likely theories. Regardless, the fire then progressed through the store consuming all available sources of fuel in its path, slowly filling the building with heat, pressure, and smoke. When the fire finally reached the butane canisters, the heat and pressure started warping the containers and the gases inside them. Canisters likely reached their limit and started leaking butane gas, which slowly started mixing with the available oxygen in the store while the flames and pressure grew in intensity. As is explained in the combustion chapter of our fire behavior books, the ratios of heat, fuel, oxygen, and reactive chemicals reached perfect critical levels that resulted in the explosion of volatile, turbulent flames. We also need to analyze a few key notes that led to the fire's explosive behavior and why the firefighters were caught unaware. First is that the store carried illegally excessive amounts in, of butane in the confined space, causing the reaction to be larger than it should have been. Second is that butane is an odorless gas, letting it go unnoticed by firefighters as it mixed with the oxygen. Also, the store's temperature to even ignite the butane would have had to have been in excess of 405 degrees Celsius. Lastly, it needs to be said that this event was not a flashover or backdraft, regardless of what certain media groups have said. This behavior was a dangerous, unusual circumstance caused by an unknown quantity of stored butane, which firefighters were able to quickly recognize 
and adapt to. This is another scene of the fire from a few streets away, showing off the large amounts of flame from the explosion. And this is the scene after the fire was officially knocked down at 2008. The May Day call resulted in over 200 firefighters coming to the aid of the initial crew. They were able to smother the fire completely with multiple hoses of water. And of the 12 firefighters that were injured, 11 of them were immediately taken to the hospital due to severe burns and respiratory damage. In response to this incident, the fire department and public safety officials decided to begin conducting annual inspections and surveys of buildings in the surrounding areas. It is to ensure that there be proper labeling and storage of hazardous materials, as well as enforce the need for installing proper fire prevention systems so no similar incidents occur in the future. Here are our sources. And that's it. Thank you.